Hello, welcome to the 1878 FM podcast after a very, very boring, disappointing, frustrating nil-nil draw with Brentford at Goodison Park on Saturday. We're joined by Dave and Sam, as always. Lads, how are you? All right, thank you. Um, yeah, I agree. Boring and, and... But frustrating is the biggest word, I think, from Saturday for me. Mm. Just, just thinking, how do they not see the urgency here? Because... They needed to. When you think about the results coming up, there needed to be an urgency, and it wasn't there. So that was that was disappointing. Sam, I have fellas. Yeah, I was. I I got frustrated, but then the more I thought about it, the more angry I got. So uh, today, even though it's two days removed, I'm really annoyed and really pissed off about that performance because it's too early in the season to be looking ahead at the next six mm. games that you've got and going. We've got to get something today, otherwise we're not going to get any points in the next three weeks. But here we are. So grim. I mean, Dave, obviously, Everton started the game all right, really. The first 15 minutes, I thought they were quite yeah. lively. I thought, so, you know, they're, they're trying to take the game to Brentford, which we don't see often enough from Sean Dyche's Everton sides. But when we don't score, we do this quite often when we don't score. It's almost like the players lose this, lose sort of any belief in what they were doing. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. got them chances in sort of like the opening 10 minutes. And then they yeah. sort of go, let's not do that again, even though we nearly scored and had them under pressure. Let's do the opposite of that now because it didn't work. And yeah. that, to me, uh, is the biggest sort of indictment of no game plan, no patterns of play. Because it, it, I don't understand how you can, as a coach or three coaches who were stood on the line, how you can allow your team to just stop doing what was quite clearly working. Seems weird. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I I agree with you. And also, it was just the fact that I couldn't help but think all the way through that, thinking, well, you know, if we were in April or May, and this was one of those we have to win this game to have any chance of staying up kind of situation, mm. then there would have hopefully been some kind of cup game mentality behind it, and there would have been urgency. The word mm. that you know, I, I there's the only and best word that I can use that was was lacking for me. Yeah. Um, and I just thought that when you look at the fixtures coming up, and I know we've said this a lot, but when you look at them, um, you just think they had to they had to beat a 10 men. Well, they had to beat Brentford at home under any circumstances, but especially mm. when they're down to 10, because there isn't going to be a better opportunity for those three points than that anytime soon. You know, I mean, anytime this calendar year for sure. Um, and so I just felt that had that had that sense of, urgency and necessity been there then they could have done it but it just seemed to be too little too late and it was just petering out into some bullshit draw that is what we what we got served up in the end I mean Ped being there Everton did start quite lively but the alarming thing for me was how quickly they just stopped doing what yeah. seemed to be working in the opening ten or There's a lack of belief in what they what they're doing, isn't it? And I think that comes from the players not believing what the what their managers telling them. They don't continue with it. They um, move from one thing to another quite quickly. There's no consistency in the things that do work. So, you know, last time out against West Ham, we were desperate for like set pieces in that game because we didn't have Dwight McNeil. Dwight McNeil was back on Saturday and only, only took fifty percent of the set pieces. It's like make it make sense. <laughs> Excuse me. Like, make it make sense. It doesn't make any sense to me that. Um and the players do get bored with it and there's no right real instruction from the sideline to keep it going. Like mm. don't stop what you're doing. It's just I think it's pretty rudderless at the moment. I feel like um uh, Sam put an analogy on Twitter, which I'm I'm I'm, I'm really, gonna, I want I wanna, I wanna hear read it, it out. I wanna, I wanna read hear it. There's dots of tones, I really do. Um but <laughs> that it does feel like at the moment that um, there's just like the players are just going through the motions, mm-hmm. and some of them like mm-hmm. Saturday was the first time, if I'm honest, that I looked at looked at Calvert Lewin and just thought, you're you, you just don't you're not not that you don't care, you're just not interested anymore. Mm-hmm. Like you can see it in in your body language, you're not you're not moving into like the right areas, you're not fighting for the team, you just look done mm-hmm. and. There's a few, pl- not like there's not like a few players like that, but you just get the sense that the players just don't believe what they're asked to do because it is mm. just continually just trying to, you know, smash a brick, a, a nail into a wall sort of thing with with a brick or <laughs> rather than a hammer. It's just like it's just it, it's just really really poor. And 
Like, I, I, I'm done with it. Like, I just don't think this fella's got any idea, any clues how to get what he wants out of the team. And the worst thing that happened on Saturday was going down to them going down to 10 men. Mm-hmm. It really was. Mm-hmm. It just, it, it said to, to us, break us down, and we had no idea how to do it. Sam, I mean, they went down to 10 men. And you're thinking, right, you know, this is your opportunity now. It's playing 10 men. They're not the most offensive side in the league by any stretch of the imagination. You know, get yourself a good win today and at least get, you know, a bit of, bit of space between the bottom three. And like Ped just said, there was no sort of conviction in what we were doing. Just no ideas, really, what we were doing. And that led to the frustration. And obviously, when you come away from it, you look back, you just think, but you, we are rudderless, like Ped said. Oh, yeah, 100%. After the first, what, 10, 15 minutes when we looked like we were knocking on the door a little bit, instead of just continuing that pressure and just you know sticking to what was working at that point, because mm. you don't have to be Man City. I mean, it's a bad analogy, judging by their form <laughs> at the moment. But you don't have to be, a, okay, a generic good team who passes mm. teams off the park to... Continue pressure just makes people tired. It makes the opponents tired. They second guess themselves, you know, and then you find spaces if you carry on. But you, you don't have to be playing this like you can play the way Everton played in the first 10, 15 minutes and just continue the pressure and just keep it moving. But it just, we just seem to fall apart. And as the game grew on, it was that thing I've, I've said like Dyche's tactic of letting the opposition grow into the game was so visible to everyone to the point where. Because I was convinced we'd win after that first 10, 15 minutes. For, for whatever reason, I was like, we can win this. Mm. And then it became very apparent. I, I thought this is going to be nil-nil. And in the second half, I was like, we're going to lose this. Like, mm. if if the game wasn't live, I was watching it on TV. If it wasn't live, I would have been convinced that I, I was like, I've seen this episode before. I'm watching mm-hmm. one I've seen before. I'd be trying to yes. turn over or find the next season or something or a different box set. But because it's it was just so predictable the way it panned out. I, I did write this thing on Twitter, which on. I'd like to read for you if that's Go all right. On, and because I, I was just trying to think of the stasis that Everton are in is just it's this horrible purgatory where we can't we can't seem to kind of make any decisions because of what's happening. So this is what I wrote. I wrote Everton and Dice both know it's over. They lie next to each other at night without saying a word. They don't make love. There was no penetration at all in November. As soon as their son Farhad moves out, they'll part ways. Until then, they plod on in this loveless, joyless, relentlessly turgid routine. So a lot of people were messaging me saying, is your marriage on the rocks? I was like, no, I'm just <laughs> talking about Everton. But what really cheered me up was some American woman on Blue Sky, which is the new place where all the kids are hanging mm-hmm. out. I heard about that last week from the my cool family. kids, sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she, she's, she's replied to it saying, in case anyone is wondering, he's talking about soccer. I had to look it up because I thought this was some new soap I should start watching. Either way, I am now invested. So there's a new blue nose for there us. You go. Uh, there it's you go. A new, it's a new soap that nobody should be watching. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it's not even a new soap. It's a really long-running soap that everybody was bored with about eight years ago. Albion Market it is of its day. It's the Albion Market. El Dorado. Oh, oh, El Dorado had some good bits, though. When we've had, had, we've had some good bits. When? Ages ago, no, when it very first started, oh, when they wanted okay. to keep you hooked. I thought you meant They had some, like, real fitty in there. It was like, but niche. she's only in there for six weeks, yeah. and then she got shot, and, uh, or, you know, Hitler yeah, coming to something else or real fitty. Yeah. Dixie God. I mean, Dave, <laughs> come on. I mean, in reply to Sam, I mean, it's very eloquently and aptly put, isn't it? It is. It's beautifully said. Um, and uh, well, I mean, it's very, very apt from the world of, of marriage and watching Everton, which are two of my specialist subjects. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it just feels like that, doesn't it? There's mm. just an inevitability about the whole thing, and, and like you, Sam, um, as the game sort of came towards a conclusion, I think as the game went on or got nearer to the end, the more it became apparent that we weren't going to win it. And like mm. you, my then fear was the fact that we could actually lose this, you know, so uh, which which obviously would have been worse. But I, I still felt no sense of achievement or joy in picking up that point in any way, shape or form. I just mm. thought this is such an opportunity wasted. Um, and that's the thing that just annoyed me and, and, and pissed me off like it did all of us, I suppose, um, because... As we said before, you know, three vital points is three vital points, whether you get them in November or you get them in April or May or whatever. And uh, we're going to need those points. And 
you can't afford to throw away games like that. The only positive I found from Saturday was the the Brentford keeper's name is a great case where the children yeah. are about to be F. Oh, Flecken. Flecken. Yeah, now. Yeah, Fleck off. Yeah. Mm. I mean, <laughs> the the old one defeat and eight, is that winding you up a little bit? It's not it's winding banter. me up, but it is something definitely to hide behind, isn't it? It's actually Young came out after the game and said it. And, and listen, that if that's what, as footballers, that's what they have sort of put a plan in action after the early games of the season the first like three games if that's the plan they've put in place like get it get it because i was actually thinking about this on the way in i was thinking about positives and i was thinking about when when newcastle went from being absolutely terrible at the beginning of the season got the money brought a new manager in and um obviously stayed up and have gone on from strength to strength the one defeat nate includes southampton getting knocked out the cup you know that don't you we that, lost the game. We lost. Well, that's, that's against the that's a, That was technically a draw, but I, I, against but when I framed it at the last game, I said it after the last game, one, one defeat, Nate, as in like he would see that as a draw and not a defeat. Hmm. Um, but the way I looked at it was, is like that when Newcastle uh, turned it round that season, they turned it round by getting loads of draws hmm. and stopping the hmm. stopping the the defeats. Hmm. Now, listen, if that's the mentality they've got then fair play. If they're looking at it going, we are just about to tee in the corner and all that needs to happen is just like one game. That's a good mentality as a mm. footballer, I imagine. But when you're a fan and you look at the fixture list, it's really difficult to have that mentality. Mm. And when you watch us play... See, the thing about Saturday for me was, it wasn't the fact that we drew a game that we should have won. It was the fact that we, we didn't make any chances. And in the mm. second half, the goalkeeper had to make one save from a shot from That's Garnish. Seven shots to get on about. Exactly, though. But it's when you break it down. It's like when you look at it from last season, as he'd be talking this time last season about XG and how many chances we'd created and we'd missed. Now you're looking at it now, the XG is absolutely horrendous mm. if you're going to use that. So we have a situation where they might feel we're just about to turn the corner and we're going to beat someone. And But I think us, us as fans, we don't feel like that. And I feel as a fan mm. that this manager has absolutely come to the end of the road. Mm. There's no... Mm. He's gone full boys to men. There's no coming yeah. back. Mm. And, you know... They didn't really come back after that. Song. Well, I actually would like to mm. see Dyche, Wone and Stone just all in... White. Sports jackets and jeans. Yeah. And all, yeah. Yeah, 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 all in the same club are coming out. Mm. Um... And I, Wouldn't I they look it's... a little bit like Liverpool did in their cup final suits, though? Mm, they? Yeah. Circa 1996. Maybe. They, they didn't have jeans, though. No. They didn't have the jeans. True. And they'd be boot-cut jeans as well, like they were mm. going to watch the rugby. Because um... <laughs> 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 let's be honest, those three do look like they'd enjoy a day at Twickenham. Maybe. Yeah. They do look like Maybe. that. You know, Maybe. spilling ale all over Giles, the fourth one with them, who they don't really want, but he's like Stoney's cousin. Who yeah, blagged yeah, the yeah. tickets? Mm, he's yeah. got the and tickets. He, he's got the parking space as well. Yeah, yeah. He mm. he, he blagged the tickets well, off there uh, because he went to school with uh, Wilco mm. or someone. I don't know. He probably you know. Well, just for XG purposes, yeah. Everton's XG on Saturday was one point two. Yeah, from twenty seven shots, and yeah. Brentford's was one point one. Yeah, from nine shots. So yeah, exactly. That's the thing, isn't it? It's quality. We're watching it. We're going. Where's the quality? And there's so many like changes within the game as well it's like there's no variation like i personally i would have put i would have put patterson on and and you know i'd add that him on the right hand side what a madman i know i know i would have had in jaya as a centre midfielder don't be silly i know exactly yeah. are you talking hand. about playing players in the right position yeah, i would have had a diamond i would have had patterson you've got diamond on diamond on go. i think he i don't think he's fit enough go do this tour and then i'll, I'll get a front <laughs> for you uh, hey, he knows his way around the pitch and the ground yeah, so you, but, on the but Pedro, you're talking about putting a right back, a right back. I am, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm mad like that. You need, yeah, you need. I'm to. mad like that. Yeah, it'll well, you never know what I mean. It's like there's just. He'll never catch it. It's like, and then you know what'll happen? He'll say, "I put in Jay in the number ten for twenty minutes, and it didn't work." Well, so he'll say, "You put two up front." That's the end of that. That's, that's true, the end of like, it? I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I'm. Obviously, we. I think we all were all well aware that. No manager's going to get sacked at Evan in the meantime mm. till this takeover sort of. But I think. Saturday, like the fans just showed, they, they're just so disinterested now, and mm. this, the so everyone's so disheartened, and people are kicking off at each other again, and people are having a go with the people who have got the flags, and all these really? things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, all these things are really bad signs for for like, and it, you know, for the club, we're on like the ve- we're on the precipice, aren't we? We're on the verge 
of it all changing. But as a fan, you can't wait, can you? You can't wait when there's no signs. If there's no actual signs that anything's about to change, you, you, you can't yeah, you wait. Can't. No one's got and that also, kind of patience. It's fairly perilous, the situation that we're in, isn't it? It's yeah. not like we're just like mid-table and, and sort of rudderless and coasting. Because that's, I mean, we'd all love that, wouldn't we? But it's we're, we're very, very, like, barely above the relegation zone. There's pl- there's teams like Leicester sacking managers and getting new managers in. So, you know, I'm, I, it's funny because I'm looking at Leicester now going, oh, are they going to get Moyes? I was a little bit jealous if they get mm. Moyes. I was a little bit jealous if they get any of the others that are out there, to be honest, because mm. at least that'll give them like a, a fresh, fresh, you know, fresh coat of paint. And mm. it's just, it's uh, looking ahead to those fixtures though. They're just coming up. Are just, it's just, it's so terrifying. And I'm, I'm, it's, it's horrible. The only good thing I thought about Dice was, on Saturday, is that he did for the was that the first time he's played Beto and Dominic Calvert Lewin together? Yeah, and it didn't really work. But Dom wasn't really making an impact anyway. Not Beto not. looked a bit lively, but he's mm. just not a very good player, is he? He's just no. not, and that's no, it, he's... isn't it? That's it. He's just not a very good player, but he's lively. And Dom, mm. Dom just isn't lively. There's just nothing about Dom at the moment. He just no. looks bereft, and then. People, he, you know, we'll sit here and go, we played two up front and people go, oh, it didn't work. I said, well, what did he do on the training pitch? Did he, if this is an asset that they've got two centre forwards, do they coach them? Do they work together on the training pitch to make them uh, understand what their roles are, what they're doing together? And, I, you know, I get a lot of, obviously my view is, I always look at the manager. I don't think it, you can ever get past the manager in any situation because, you know, People said when Frank Lampard was the manager or Benny, when Benitez was the manager, people would say, you know, he, this is terrible, we need to change. So we brought Frank Lampard in and it changed and we stayed up. And then Frank Lampard exhausted all his resources. And then it's, we need a new manager. So then Dice comes in and Dice improved us. And then you get to this point where it's like, these are limited managers. There's only so far they can take you till you've got to move on to the next one unless you've got a really good manager and you have got money and you can start moving in a direction which is everyone improves but they're limited so what they do can only go so far so even if you look at us now the set pieces are dead mm-hmm. like everyone's figured out mm-hmm. how we scored set pieces just Dwight McNeil takes the same corner every time but that's it so the thing that worked for us is now dead and we've got nothing else we've got nothing else because we don't there's not enough tinkering with the system. There's not enough moving players around. There's not enough trying different things. And everyone has figured out how to play against well, I us. Put, I put the Ruben Amaran thing in our group last night simply to just watch the first 45 seconds of his interview after the game mm-hmm. yesterday. And he was talking about having to win now. Yeah. And he was like, I guarantee you, if you just play to win one game yeah. without changing anything, you will still be here in 12 months doing the same yeah. thing, yeah. not moving anywhere. Same amount of points. And he's talking about Manchester United. But that's all Everton have done under Sean Dykes. He keeps quoting what it was like before he got here. He's Everton's second longest serving manager after Martinez since Moisley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's had enough time. Yeah. But he just plays like he's walking into a dressing room and picking 11 lads every week. It, there's yeah. no progression. No. So he will. He, he may well um, get you 35 points, which might be enough to keep you up across the whole mm-hmm. season. But it's why you're back where you start. No matter what progress yeah. you might do within the, the nine, ten months yeah. of the season, you start at zero again. That, yeah. And yet you bring coaches in, in my opinion, to make you a better football team, to put you higher up so you don't have to worry about that. That's the whole mm-hmm. point of it. Coming in and managing for four months and, and scrapping and getting points, no issue with it. That's your job yeah, at yeah. that moment, but you have to take it on. Mm. We're not going on. Someone put in sent me pictures of, well, we all seen them, didn't we? Of what Burnley fans were saying yeah. near the end, why he had to go. Mm. The same thing, and some so, of the things are terrifying. You know, yeah, just playing kicking favourites up in the air, no matter what. Playing, playing favourites, no, no plan B, no plan. Not. Yeah, and then we saw. I think we saw. A, I think we saw a combination of that on Saturday. It's just like, you know, it's just and again. It's, you know what? Right again. That's if that's just his management, and that's it. Well, then we can't really have a go with him. He's just. No, at, it's, he's at the end you, of that. that you, we the, are at the end. Go on, but the, other thing, the other the other thing as well with yeah. that is that as we know and and there was there was bits of this in his post match from Saturday as well is that he the narrative is the fact that he's like well what do you want me to do 
in other words, yeah. the bigger picture around the club. And he's been he's been he's been intimating this for some time now. Mm. Is a bit like, you know, when when the reporter asks, Can you understand the frustration in the crowd, et cetera, et cetera? And he's a bit like, Well, this crowd's been frustrated for years, et cetera, et cetera. And this is what he's saying. So he's sort of absolving himself from that responsibility mm. in so much as, well, there's only so much that m- myself and Stone and Wong can do, um, you know, and therefore there just doesn't seem to be, as you say, Ped, it's just all a bit hopeless because there's no, there's no, there's no sign that this will ever improve. Um, and the only way that the, the situation improves is when the inevitable happens and, um, and the new owners, you know, get rid of him, which is is obviously going to happen. But when that's going to happen is obviously the the question. Sean Dyche would make a great politician, though, wouldn't he? Because he's just constantly blaming the previous administration, no matter mm-hmm. how long he's been in the post. We've got no plan B. I'd say our plan A is pretty sketchy as well, to yeah. be honest. It's not yeah. really doing much. And, you know, everyone at the club, fans, staff, players and the manager, know that he's on the way out as soon as the new man as soon as the new owner's mm, coming mm. surely and you, you can sort of get the sense of that and if that's the situation it just it there's no motivation amongst any of those groups to to feel positive about the future or put things in place for the future because if you're if you're, you're a placeholder aren't you that's the you're thing a you're a placeholder and, and and actually that's exactly what Dom looked like on on Saturday yeah and then mm. if you're thinking right should we do an extra session around ex- expanding our set Pete's res- uh, Repertoire, or should we go and watch Fontaine's DC and Manchester Ritz? Mm. You're probably just going to go the gig, aren't you? Mm. Mm. Oh well. What <laughs> can I just before we just before we finish, Evan? Yeah. I mean, how are you feeling because about the whole thing? Because I genuinely think he's taken us down. Like I, I mm. don't see this mythic thing of like he's mm. going to get us mm. safe, but it's mm. going to be terrible. Mm. I genuinely think he's taken us down. But that's the whole point, though, Ped. That's that's why Saturday was so frustrating. Yeah. Because yeah, because like like you, I'm really worried about this season. You know, because those are the points which we will need. Yeah. Come the end, and we'll go back and say, why the hell didn't we get those three points against a ten man Brentford when we had every opportunity to do them? Um, mm. And this is what concerns me because every point is going to be is going to be vital. I feel like he's he's taken us down. I feel like you know, if nothing changes, with it, Everton have got that, that like classic kind of squad and style of play that feels like they're too good to go down and just get sucked into mm-hmm. it. And you know, there's there's such less than at a point behind us, aren't they? Yeah, a point behind us. Yeah, I found you know Facebook memories where it comes up what, <laughs> what you what you posted. I found yeah. this today. This app this on the day we're recording, so November the twenty fifth. Uh, 2017, this was written. Mm-hmm. I've been lying awake worrying about Everton recently. Haven't done that in 20 years. That was in 2017. Now, I've been doing that ever since 2017. Mm. It's 2024. Mm. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Did you have a hair ridiculous. on the picture? <laughs> no. No, that oh, was... Okay. I think I was... My, I was just I, I might how bad the worry one. was. Mm. Mm. Can't have been that bad then. No. Uh, I a... I, I'm numb to it. I told you someone come up to me, two, two different people at the weekend after it. Someone come up to me and said, are you all right? And I was like, yeah, why? And she was like, never seen you so quiet or disinterested. And I was mm-hmm. like, that's what I am. I'm no, I'm, I'm the same. I've I'm got, the same. I'm not angry because of what's the point and I've got nothing to give. I just sit there. I was bored. bored yeah. No, I, I'm just the, the same. Bored. I just think unless we get, unless by the end of December, we've got 18 points, then I think we're in, I think we're in real, real trouble. Real big. Real um, trouble. And the other person told me that 17 is an incredible achievement with this, and this manager's amazing. And yeah. it's well, just a bit of if that we get round. to if we get to the new stadium, that's yeah. all. There's a bit of that going round, and, and then when I said, "What happens then?" Oh, when we get there, yeah. that will change. We'll be attacking. <laughs> so I said it. That's where I said it's yeah. not Hogwarts. Yeah. Um, and he also said, if we get relegated in the new stadium, it won't matter because we'll have already played some Premier League games there. So when that's some, I'm, yeah. he was older than me, so. I mean, I don't know whether senility oh, is set in. Or well, that's it. Maybe just been out, having a day out from just the... Strange, the just strange, just strange, because I, I don't understand that. Mentally. No, no. I believe Nev was in the lounges on Saturday and he was giving it big time about uh, standards at the football club. They're on the Good. foot. So, peddled by some of our... So, that's fantastic that he was there and he's given yeah. it, he's given that. Because that's what that's what we need to hear. And mm. the, the, the media are quite numb to it as well, aren't they? They're not really asked about us whatsoever. No. 
you know, I, I don't know what was said on match of the day again. Probably it was everything's all right. But I think yes, that you know, I think Leicester sacking their manager is a big going to be a big wake up call for a lot of our fans. Oh God, I, I believe it's a wake up call call for a couple of people. <laughs> well, it is around the club. It's going to be a big wake up call because a club that have been promoted. Okay, it was a club that we are used to seeing in the Premier League for the last fifteen years or so. Mm. They're sacking their manager. You see why, why are they sacking? Go on. Because results aren't good enough. Exactly, yeah. And they've got one point mm. less than ever. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So, there you go. And they haven't spent there any go. money. So, there you go. Um, it was good to uh, all be in the same room last week. It was. Wasn't it? And hopefully, it something hopefully. that we could do in the future where we actually do a pod all together. Mm. I think that'd be that'd be interesting, all being in the uh, the same room. I think we'd have a good laugh doing that. I'd have to say. stoop down, though, because I'm so incredibly well, you tall. Are, well, Massive you are Sam. tall. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, wow. we, had picture, tall, man. we had a, we had a picture taken, tall, and, and, and Baz, I think you know your tactic of having us sit down was a smart one, mm. and one that I <laughs> I supported and approved of because I've we, done this before, Dave. Yeah, I know uh, exactly, and you can tell that you're a pro at this, you know. And the right. height differential was was less apparent, I thought. In yeah, terms of I think so. Positioning, but it, but to go back to your original point, I thought it was really. Yeah, it was good. It was just good to be be in the same room and and all be together and and whatnot. And we should try and do it more often if we possibly can. I think we should Absolutely. do it. I think we should do like the show like live on a stage somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. I think first of all, let's get in the same room well, we before you're taking it to the bloody stage. That. No one actually do a pod. We've done, listen, if you can get Dave Vitti into the city. Without Vitty in the city, Vitty in the city. I'm telling you what, if that's not a show. with other human mm. beings knowing that he's here, so we can't just stealthily get into the yeah, city and yeah. go the <laughs> go the ivy. Yeah, yeah. You know, get into the city without posting a picture on Facebook where we go. What yeah. what, what are you doing? What's yeah. Doing? yeah. 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 Actually, get him here by someone else's car. Obviously, not his own not car. His own car. Not his own car. Mm. Doesn't travel in his own car unless he needs to. Mm. Then mm. it's it's or a has one. I, I, I think we, <laughs> if you can do that, you might as well get it on stage, you know what I mean, in front of people yeah. and have a little live show. Why let's, not? Let's get into Murphy's and have the four of I think that's what doing we should do. Although, although it'd be quite pricey to get to get Sam, wouldn't it, you know, with with his with his uh, rider. See, the problem is if you're if you're taking Sam on... See, Sam in the studio, mm. his only request was a yeah. coffee. Yeah. I don't even think he had yeah. milk in it. Yeah. That's, that was how simple his request was. Simple. Once you take me, me, Avery me, 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 from me, the floor... Me, me, I mean, I was a big hitter. I went for a tea bag and a splash of milk. Yeah, you did. You did, Dave. But that's okay, Dave. Yeah. I've heard Getting you like right, a tea Terry bag. And... <laughs> I've heard Sam's rider is literally boats and hose. Well, that's we... all. Yeah, we yeah, be yeah. yeah. And hose. We'd be down by the uh, the dock, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, but when I say hose, you mean the, the gardening floor. implements? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, yeah. to sort your cabbages out. Getting them from yeah, the yeah. floor onto the stage, I imagine, is pricey. Yeah, peak price. We couldn't have it there, could we? Because Joe would turn up looking Not for that price. Hello. Um, I but mean, tell you, what, you like. check out his rider, I'd imagine. Oh, well, I mean, I again, mean... that's a different podcast. <laughs> yeah, we won't be doing that on this podcast. I mean, that's a... Sadly, that's sadly, sadly Herbert's not... You know what? Yeah. One thing I was thinking um, <laughs> on a different note. Okay, go on. You know the way... It's... Do you ever lose the remote to your telly? Like, misplace... Not lose it. That'd be weird if you lost it, but misplace it. Yeah. Why doesn't the remote have something to show where it is? Does it, I'm pretty sure the Sky remotes do now. If you can call where I am, it'll, it'll go, I'm here, pet. Yeah. Or I don't know if it knows you. Well, I'm asking in the fridge. Mm -hmm. yeah, why? Yeah, I mean, in the fridge? That, I mean, why is it in the fridge? Ah, now, Good. it's interesting you say that because I sometimes purposely put stuff in the fridge. And the reason for that is... A that remote? No, not a remote. Oh. What I sometimes do is, I mean, in the days when I used to have a car, right? Yeah. <laughs> is that I would sometimes put my car keys in the fridge. And the reason for that was that if I've made myself a packed lunch and I didn't want to forget it in the morning, yeah. I'd put my keys on there ah. because I knew that I couldn't leave the house without my car keys. Therefore, I couldn't leave the house without finding them in the fridge, which was on top of my... Does that make, 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 make sense at all? No? It does make it sense. Does. It, yeah, a little bit eccentric, but it makes total sense. Yeah, Because you used so. to get also, car keys with, with the thing where you could whistle yeah. and they beat, yes. wouldn't they? Well, the it's also seen... it's on, an Dave. interesting. On, Dave. Sorry, it's an interesting conversation because my mum only yesterday, right, decided she had this conversation with me and she said, "I'm thinking about getting a burner phone, right?" And I what? said, "Why? Why are you getting wire? a burner? Watching the wire. <laughs> why, why, why are you getting a burner? My mum's eighty-three, right? Why are you Taped getting under a burner... the couch? Yeah, a burner phone. 
Yeah. And the reason for it was that she spends so much time misplacing her actual phone that she thought that she could therefore use it to ring the other phone to find out where it was, right? I like it. Now, I like I'm it. Sure there's, I'm sure there's another way of doing this, but I haven't quite cracked that yet in terms of like what the best route forward is. But that whole thing about finding something that you've misplaced is actually very apt and timely because we've been having this conversation only 24 hours ago. I, I would never lose my phone because it's permanently stuck in my hand. So I will never lose it. Wherever yeah. I am, it's there. But what about those things that kids have for mittens on the coat? Um, yeah. You could have a little yeah. bit of like thread. Yeah. yeah. Just ca- mm-hmm. Not necessarily well, for the remote, but then when I leave the house, it'd be in work with me. Wouldn't be good. Yeah. I'm, I'm just still like taken back by Dave and his car keys because oh, I don't it makes like, sense. No, it doesn't though, because it's not like you can't turn up at work and go, oh, I forgot to drive here. Nobody can't get to work, so he goes. Where's my exactly. car keys? Exactly. You have to keys. Wait, key, you, you put. You put. You put. Whatever is important <laughs> to remember. You put your keys on them. Yeah. Right. He because then you know exactly. that you he wasn't can't worried about leaving yeah. his keys or the car. Peds, he was worried about his pack lunch. Ped's yeah, thinking exactly. he's he's going to forget the car keys. Yeah. But remember yeah, the pack lunch. That's not really what he's doing. The other way around. I, 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 I get that, that but just that like have a insane. bowl above your like fridge. Then. Well, yeah. Something. This morning, like right, this morning, I've got. Got me stuff, my laptop, just me drinks and all that. And I got me trainees for obviously kids training tonight. And I put them by the door. I know you're small, but and I've got exactly. And I've got me stuff. <laughs> and my laptop playing in the on. under 11s league. And I walked out of the door, stepped yeah. over me trainees, got in a pause. Me missus opened the door and said, "We're not taking these to training." I literally stepped over them. I put them there not to yeah, forget. But you weren't gonna. Just you weren't gonna run to work, were you? No, but I go straight from no, here. No, no, but, but the thing is... with Dave's car is he has to get to where he wasn't leaving the car. I'm, I'm, it was he was leaving I just the can't get lunch. past that. I can't it's, get past that. I I think it is to to your point, Sam. I think it maybe is slightly eccentric, but to me it works because you know you, you're making sure works. that you're putting a crucial item that you cannot possibly yeah. leave behind, i.e., mm. your keys, on something which you want to remember. So hang like, on, yeah. hang on. Let me just oh. let me just take a. Mm. Are you? Are you making sure you don't forget your keys or don't forget your dinner? No, no, are no, you, no. Keys, 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 keys are a given, right? Keys are a given, okay. right? So yeah, the it's key, the dinner. Keys are okay. Okay. Me. This, this is a crucial so, part. This one's like, this one's like, this like right. someone saying to Dyke. No, this is like someone saying to Dyke, go forward with the ball. No, no, no. Goal. He's going. The idea. Don't get it. Hang on. The idea then that you look in the fridge for your car keys and go, oh, there's me dinner. Like, <laughs> of course, yeah, it yeah. is in your fridge. Yeah, but I'll, give, I'll, give you, I'll give you another one, though. Like, if there was something else I didn't want want to forget you sometimes you put them in your shoes right because you, i've done that when, when you put your shoes on yeah. you're gonna go what the fuck are you that? how have you got your pack lunch in your shoes no no no, no. it doesn't That's... work for pack, it doesn't work for oh, pack okay. lunches okay. because it's like, the wrong shape and size i've got but two example, more things you know, very you quickly wanna, like, remember your, your wallet That's okay i've got two more things very quickly because now you've got to go dave right one <laughs> why is it called <laughs> rush hour <laughs> when no one moves it's literally at like snail's pace. I think I sat in the thing the other day and the radio was on on Friday and we're in rush hour traffic. I wasn't rushing anywhere. How is it called rush hour? Because people are mm. trying to rush. But they're not rushing. It's There's never a rush. Even if we're coming up to Christmas, even Chris Ree has got a song about it driving over mm. Christmas. Mm. There's mm. red lights all around, bumper to bumper. Oh, that, that's, that's, Vanilla ice done the same. bumper to bumper. <laughs> there's no rushing anywhere. He actually, his family live in Amsterdam. Me. I feel yeah. like you need to take a lesson from Billy Ocean rather than rather than yeah. Caribbean, Caribbean girl. Caribbean girl. Yeah, Caribbean, Caribbean queen, queen yeah. even. Red, red light spelled danger. Mm. And I think you've got to remember that. <laughs> but I'd have had to go through bloody when the go and get sucked yeah. to me Caribbean queen yeah. to come up with the... Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. So that's one of the things. Like, get home, it should be, be called on Snail's the Hour. With the other fella. Mm. Yeah. Snail's Hour. Yeah. 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 Um, I feel like this is... I and the like other one. I feel like you've been triggered. I'm, I've been <laughs> triggered by just thinking about that Everton game again. I'd let it go, like very much like Ailsa. Um, and the other one, and this was something that was said in a conversation yesterday with, about a, a kid. Mm. You know the you know the phonetic alphabet? You know mm. people say like yeah. the phonetic? Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, yeah, Delta. Yeah, right? That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're mm. saying it. When people say yeah. spell it phonetically, yeah. you're supposed mm-hmm. to be spelling it how it sounds, right? Are you? Why is phonetic spelled PH? That's a good point. Uh, that's a really good one, yeah. Have you been going through the big book of podcast topics no, or something? No, 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 no. <laughs> it was just we were talking about it yesterday and it was like, hang on. Things to discuss. They're telling when me the to spell it phonetically. 
Phonetically, <laughs> PH. Okay. No, explain to me. Come on. Man of all seasons. Tries when they're not from France as well. That's another one. That's another mm. one. I don't. I don't know. I don't I, know. What Dave, come on. You're a man of the world with grey hair who who slips in and out of the city. Like, you know, we don't know. Milk but, tray man. Milk tray yeah. man. So, yeah. what's your take on though? Rush hour when you go at snail's pace. Phonetic, spelt wrong. Well, I'm going to deal with them both in order of, okay. um, of appearance. So I think that um, rush hour should maybe be called the crawl hour or something to Good your one. point because nobody rushes anywhere because of the well, sheer weight of traffic. Sheer weight of yeah. traffic obviously being what they sort of say on, on traffic reports. Yeah. And in terms of the phonetic, yeah, you're right because, yeah, it's um, it's it's pH is one of those sort of um, absurdities of the English language, isn't it? You know, so it should really... Be yeah, they shouldn't have another word for phonetic, shouldn't they? That's actually sort of um, spelt how it sounds. Oh, just say F O N E T I C. Yeah. Are you going to swear then? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No swearing. Need. Have you ever done the phonetic alphabet though on the phone to like a bank when they actually postcode and you and then you can't think of the words? Yeah. <laughs> I used to have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used, used to have Q. To I used to, I used to word, use the word Q to explain the the letter Q, which yeah. is obviously just repeating the letter. The idea yeah. is that you make it. Q for you Q. make it easier. But hang on, but which Q? Like a Q that you stand in, or a Q as in Q the music? Because one's with a C and yeah. Oh Q. Jesus! Snooker Q. That. That's why all my bank statements have been going to the wrong address for twenty five right. years. <laughs> That's why the fella next year won't take your bins out anymore. That's why I couldn't get a mortgage. Yo, Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's all being easier now. Right, I'm going. I, I like crawl hour. Sorry, crawl hour. Yeah, and I the think thing about crawl. It's crawl's got other connotations, doesn't it? If you're in a car, yeah. so I think we should let careful. Dave go and carry on. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I need to Dave. go and make me pack lunch. It's, 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 it's in the fridge underneath my car keys. Underneath your car keys. Don't put your shoes on in case you've got a ham sandwich in there, on. son. In case you've got soup inside your boots. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants soup in their boots. Never. <laughs> never, ever, ever. David, lovely to talk to you. Take care. Thank you. See you bye, soon. Bye, 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 Cheers. Bye, 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 bye. It feels like you wanted to carry on. So, I, yeah, I just, wanted, so, you know, on. I just wanted to carry on a little bit because I just on. wanted to ask... What I wanted to, I should have, could have done this with Dave because I think Dave would have been interested on this. Not mm. that you two gentlemen wouldn't be, but what is something I that, that I won't be. what is something that you uh, always or often say you get dragged to, but secretly really, really like? So, is there anything you go, oh, I have to go and do that thing? Because I went to see Wicked over the weekend, is it good? And it's it, I've been to see it three, you didn't get hang on, hang on, hang on, sorry, hang on. You didn't get dragged there. No. You told me you were going to see it, and you were pirouetting round the studio. No, I pirouette round the studio. And you anyway. were going on about going to see Ari. You couldn't no, wait no, to see no, Ari. No. That's what you said. I was going to see Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, um, no, because the reason... No, if it was a film I really wanted to see, I would have booked the tickets ages in advance, got yeah. me seats, made sure that I had a seat where there was no knobheads in front of me, and, and, every, and it was like, I booked the one in the middle so no one can sit near me. I can spread my legs out and... You know, all that. But what it did was I played it on the down low so that me missus went, oh, I've bought us tickets. So it's that bit out then, doesn't it? Because normally I spend like 30, 40 pounds on a couple of cinema tickets. So it was like, oh, I've got the tickets for Wicked on Sunday. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, I'm going to have to change my day. I'm going to have to go for a run earlier and, you know, go early and I'll have to get up early and have something to eat early so I can go for a run early and then I'll go to pitches. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah. Did you go for a run? I did go for a run. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the 11th So... You know, I've been, listen. I've been to see the mu- been to see it three times mm. as a musical. And Sounds like you got dragged there. Yeah. I got dragged there, but you know, is there anything? Like where, is it no? But is there anything you'll make it seem like you don't want to be there? So, like you know, the expense taken out of it, or you know, it's it's you the don't tip. you don't have to put any effort. Went into the dump it. yesterday. The, the, tip, the tip made it made it like it was a, an issue, um, and it was great. Went there, launched some stuff into the skip. Angrily. Did you go on your own? No, no, me, me, Mrs. Rats. No. I normally go on my own, but she loves it because you take loads of stuff and launch. It's great. So you've got to put up a little bit of a oh, Sunday afternoon, no. Mm. What really I'm thinking is, yeah. right, I can get rid of all that. Yeah, Shite, that get out the house. Go. Get it out the house. It's great. You come back. No, just get, the the, just get oh, out the house. Just get out the house. I've already been out of being a fussy in the morning. Yeah, and uh, yeah. you can shrug your shoulders yeah. all you want. Yeah. Take oh, your little no. trainees. Didn't take me little. No. I actually have my little trainees on. Good. Well, it's, it's, it's the, a good start. Not being it? funny, it's the pleasure of coaching a team 
that attacks and scores yeah. goals and you stand on the side. It always comes it. back to that, doesn't it? it? Attacking course. and scoring exactly. goals. I mean, yeah. it'll never catch you. Oh, look at you. It'll never Billy catch Big you. Dick over there. Oh, we can all say it. I don't even Sam. know what you're talking about, attacking no. and scoring goals. What's yeah. No, no. It's a, it's a new concept. It'll never catch Spy you. Spy-fi stuff. Um, have you got anything, Sam, that you yeah, can make mine your is over? Go on. Go in the big, doing the big shop. I do the big shop on a Monday and I take the kids with me. Right. And I always make it out to my wife like it's like, oh, I've got to do the big shop. But it's actually dead good fun because <laughs> I've got my kids. I've got nine-year-old twin boys. and I've got a, I've been forcing them to come to the shop with me every Monday after school. Hmm. And for the first, this is about 12 months in now, the first couple of months, they were like, you know, dragging their feet, getting all the wrong stuff, loads of arguments, stealing the trolley when I'm not looking, like messing about. And now... They're like little, I've got like little scouts and they just go off and they get little things. And we get it done in like 20, <laughs> 24 man. minutes. We time ourselves. So we're trying to beat our record. Oh, I like that. I it's like gloss. that. It's good. We're running around. And I have to keep saying, don't run when you've got eggs. Because they yeah. just leg it through Aldi. And, you know, you've got your st- the staff. The staff are quite aggressive in Aldi in terms of like they just, yeah. they don't really care about the shoppers. They're just trying to pack the shelves and the yeah. elbows are up. And yeah. So there's a lot of hazards. So it's like an old school 1980s computer game, like Paperboy yeah. or something where you've got, Oh, there's a woman with a pram. You got to dodge it, and then, and then the kids are putting the the, the wrong items in. They're putting the right items, but they got really good at it now. I feel like are our you PB, on PBs? We're on like PBs. Your yeah. PB, quick leg, see slide. I feel like I feel like you're like trying to put together an or uh, a tape for the audition for supermarket. It feels like it. Feels like it. I, I think if that show came back, we would be a shoe in. I I see no, but no, I we could come back mm. with a twist. Yeah. As Sam just said, parents, couple of kids. I like you. Can you do it? I this is time. Though. The Averys no... are on whatever. Twenty three <laughs> minutes and eighteen seconds to do their week. Can you beat that? I like that though. I like that. Gotta and be plus, a certain amount of items, of course. Aldi's like a child friendly size store as well, isn't it? I don't I yeah. don't can I pause you can there, always like... see you. No, you can't. I don't. Where does Sam go with Aldi? Because he's mentioned this. The aggressive stuff. The ones we go to, they're no aggression there. That's Gattaca, though. That's like, no, I, I always that's call that like the middle that's, class Aldi. That's the one That's the one I go to. But I, I don't mean they're aggressive. They're very nice. And in fact, I chat to a lot of them now because they always go, oh, you got the kids helping you again. I'm like, yeah, yeah they're going to need friends. Again. But what, what I mean, it's a just a great place to meet people, isn't it? Yeah, like minded folk. Yeah. But in terms yeah, of like. The people the, who want to eat. Yeah, or buy, or buy snorkel need, gear or break need, the PB need toilet shopping. paper. Mm. But they're not really that bothered about if they're stacking the shelf, that takes priority over you yeah. trying to get a bit of spinach, isn't it? So they're not really moving out the way. That's what I mean. The committed to the role. No, I mean, I, I, look, I, I look a bit like him before the spinach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like, I see, I think that's a pit. It's like a child friendly store because you could generally, I imagine, see your kids all the way as well. You've got, you've got good line of sight, see your kids. Yeah. And I, I, Let I, you get to the middle aisle. I just think that's tremendous. I think that's amazing. I'm not doing that in Smith Down, as there. And you know, you built what you're doing as well. You're putting that like aggressive, competitive streak in Mentality. your kids as well. I like that. Mm. I like that. And every time you beat it. And I, what I like about that is, and I don't know whether you do this, whether you would do this, but if they didn't beat it, I'd, I'd take something out the trolley that they really wanted. <laughs> Personally, that's what I'd do. I'd so go like punishing them for yeah, not being good enough. No, Fair that's play. it. You've got to have that. Right. You've got to have no that milk this week. No. no milk this week, lads. No you have dry cornflakes. Yeah, yeah. No milk. You have, you know, you have to have them crunch. Because what we've got are things like we know with kids, like sports days yeah. where no one can win. Yeah, not allowed to win in sports day. Now everyone's got to win. What you're mm. you're taking it back on? You might get away with it in sports yeah. day, mate. You ain't getting away ain't, with it in this fun. No, no, you ain't getting away with the it. Real in world. Life. You ain't getting away with it yeah, in life. And if you don't succeed, the man will take the milk away from you. The man. Someone will take that milk off you. Mm, yeah. You what you think Wednesday nights, meatball nights? No, 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 no. Mm. Not in this climate, it's not. Not in this economy, it's not. That can and if you you are, it's a race to the top. And Aldi is life. It, though, isn't it a woke a woke society? No, no, no. That's nonsense. They just okay. want you to think that. Okay. Uh, and Sam mm. is Sam's teaching his kids the Sam. right way, and I like that. Mm. You don't win. You don't get fed. You don't get shoes. Oh, you do get shoes, but the <laughs> shoes you get from Aldi, they're Aldi shoes. Middle aisle flippers. School, middle aisle. Wearing no sco- those wearing shoes. Wearing snowshoes. That will toughen you up, yeah. Wearing tennis rackets. <laughs> oh, yeah. I that shoes. Yeah. Or, as a point, you know, I think that might be harsh, but a week of, you know, the uh, the ice grip shoes. Mm. So literally just the things you put on yeah. with the spikes on. Yeah. Even yeah. when it's like today and it's mild, you'd have yeah. to wear them for a week to school. Yeah. Even though it's not, there's no snow, there's no ice, but people walk in and go, 
didn't beat your personal best, yeah. did you? And you're like, how do you know? <laughs> Look what you've got on. Yeah. Look what you've got yeah. on. That's the only way you to go do it. in all face all red and blotching. Mm. Like, did you lose? But yeah, my dad made me wash my face with tapes. That feels yeah. like a bit aggressive, though. But I'm I haven't got kids, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I, 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 you, I'm not you sure. Probably wouldn't make no. that away with that. No, I'm not sure. And your gums and your lips are all bleeding because you've had to eat wheat a bit dry. <laughs> Again, me and a, pa- a past life will be knocking on your door. No, go I'm, just, I'm just I'm not convinced. I'm saying I, I haven't got kids, so I yeah. don't know where, what that bar is. The bar is okay. Like I say, those ice shoes, the spikes yeah. on the shoes. It lets everyone know. Yeah, I'd like failed. that as well. Sam could go in on a Monday and just the I don't know. Again, I don't know what they do in schools anymore. Mm. But they used to have those assemblies where someone would come in and mm. explain, explain things. Explain You know, yeah. you get those people who come in and explain all kind of, and how like life and all that. Sam could come in and just go, "Hello, boys and girls. I just want everyone to know that if you see my children here and they've got uh, red blotchy face." Tennis racket to shoes. It's because they lost the challenge on Monday. And I would like you all, with my permission, to ridicule my children. So, feels a no, little bit... No, 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 no. Ridicule my children works. in the works. same way I am ridiculed for for being bald. Um, because Only on this I podcast. Not, because I have not... Not by me, Sam. No, no, just in life. <laughs> because I haven't passed my own internal Aldi challenge, which is where normally all the stuff comes from, isn't it? Some deep trauma has come into yeah. Sam at some point. Are you saying Sam used to go shopping and... and he, I'm just saying... He just... I don't know what's anything. going on, but I feel just, like... there for three yeah, hours. I feel like he asked for chocolate and got lard. That's all I'm saying. So go into school and set, make it out to everyone. Yes, you all can. And this, by the way, there's no kids in the room. This is just to the teachers. Oh. You can ridicule my children when you see them come in and uh, make sure you do. Make sure you laugh at them, put something on the back saying, kick me because I couldn't do the Aldi challenge. Whatever it is. And those boys, oh, by the time they leave school, the they will either be winners or in therapy. One or the other. One or the other. <laughs> but, I think there'd have to be like a level low. Because say you're PB, you, you shave them. You will know this because yeah, yeah. I think you run. Course, I think yeah. you've said you might run. Yeah. Um, there'll be a level where you get to PBs yeah. where you it, you can't course, shave that much off it. So I don't think you can ridicule them then. No, no, but if no. you know, say they've done the shop in 23 minutes, mm. 37 seconds, and Sam's thinking, we're a couple of minutes slower. Mm. I know we've minutes. got a couple more minutes here. It's yeah. not even seconds. Mm. Then fair play, maybe that is yeah. when they're allowed. Maybe. You're allowed to have a go at them. Once Sam's thinking... We're tight now. We're talking shaving seconds yeah. off this because we've given everything. Yeah. I, I think then you have well, to pull also, on that. It, also, it depends on what we're getting because the list yeah, that week... There's got to be an a, a number of items, though, Sam. But you know what the truth is, you've got to standardise lists, haven't you? Do you know yeah. what the truth Some is, weeks are like end of it. holiday weekends. Mm. Yeah. You know what the, and the, Christmas, the, when the everyone, Christmas Eve, when people get three trolleys full, even yeah. though the shops are closed for two days. And but the, yeah, This is the treat at the end of it, so yeah. it's not... We're keeping it We're keeping it hard still. So the treat isn't like chocolate or sweeten. The treat is, if you get near a PB or whatever range Sam has set is, if you fall below it, you have to go to the self-service and pack it all yourself. The treat is... Oh. You put it on the you put it on the rail and let the woman do it or the gentleman. Well, can I tell you something that we have brought in in terms of a rule? Like, so when they've got the PB, the, yeah. whatever time they've got only stands in the record books if at the till, which I then put stuff onto the till and then I put into the trolley because all the you know the the lunatics in there the way the speed that they go at is just so efficient. Yeah. So they go and stand by the the packing Parkour. shelf, and what I do is the nine pack of toilet paper. I have to throw that across the aisle. Oh. And if they don't catch it, that time doesn't count. So it's like everything then depends on that. And sometimes we have like kitchen roll as well. I like what you've done there. You've 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 added time. Oh no, but I see I'd have time penalties. So if that they didn't catch it, I'd knock like ten seconds. I uh, add ten seconds onto the time. Person, that's what I do. You know, little penalties here or there. Just yeah. You know, throw it, throw, get a get a tin of beans and just throw it at their head. And if they yeah. can't save it, go with the head. No, no, I think the Catch head. this egg. Yeah, just get a cup, just get six eggs and just throw it at them. That's don't, a good one. Don't egg. warn them. Just like over from like three aisles, just throw it at it. Just, just shout like a whistle, like a... And if they don't react in time and that egg hits them on the head, then then not only did they, they have a face full of egg, but you add 20 seconds on. I, these things will make it, these kids strong. But this what makes supermarkets you make you sweet strong better. Yeah. Because supermarket sweep, there was no there was no obstacles, there was no jeopardy, mm. was there? It was just no. you and the aisles. And there was yeah, no the other island, Dale Winton. That's it. 
Mm. So I, I'd like to add a new game into this if I could, Sam. Um, do you know the Do you know the aisles where the uh, it's just fro- frozen food all the way along? Yeah. How about you start them on one side each, and it's you. It's whoever can get into the freezer, out the freezer, it all the way along, and they whoever wins that battle. So they have to open it for yeah, the to get something out of the freezer though. Yeah, yeah, one thing per per fridge each on either and just side. Throw it into the trolley. And they just uh, no, they have to hold the oh, hold them all. The kids so they've got to open it. They've got to shut it, and they've got to shut it as well. Because I hate that when you go to, and you see yeah. someone leave the fridge open. No, that's Scum. not the rules, my Scum. friend. You shut that's the freezers it. after you. Mm. And those kids have, and the one who gets to the end gets to keep all the things he got. The other one has to pay for it, the whole lot. I like that. So you go yeah. from collaboration to competitive against each other. Maybe the yeah. winner goes up to the next level, and the following week we go to Waitrose, where it's the a whole loser just doesn't get fed. We're no going food. again. You're over. We're going camp rules. No, yeah. I think you're overstepping. It's a great I think you've had a bit. I think you've, you've, you think you did really well. Yeah. With your idea, but well, as I said, I'm not, I'm not a father. No, I'm not a you've father. Gone a bit too aggressive. But... I would say add this idea to the spreadsheet of TV yeah. shows that we're going to pitch in the new year. Yeah, okay. I, well, I think that, it, you know, it could look a little bit softer than Ped's version. Mine's like... But I think it could get on top. Mine's the Japanese version. Yeah, that, oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Get Craig Charles commentating. You, you're on to a win I yeah. can see it. I can see it. Let's leave it there for Ped's ideas get any more extreme. Mm. Um, right, Sam, brilliant, as always. Top man. Thanks. Uh, make can sure just, you like, subscribe. Can I plug me tour again? Can I plug me tour? Go on, plug away, yeah. Man. My tour's on sale, samaverycomedy.com, so they tour around the country in 25 and 26. So, uh, this is a great Christmas present. Great Christmas thunderstorm. Present. Feels like a great Christmas present. Is that right, Sam? Thunderstorm tour? Thunderstorm, yeah. It's the name of the show. And, uh, I've, I've, at this point, I've got 10 minutes of it written. So, oh, that, that 10 minutes I've got so that far. 10 minutes. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, I think I've just given you another five minutes. Oh, at least. At, at least. least. And you could also hide tickets in the freezer in out certain Aldi's and people like Willy just Wonka. go down. And, and like go, Willy Wonka. But but mm-hmm. only their kids can find them. Maybe. Maybe. Right. Maybe. Brilliant, Sam. We'll have the link in the description below to that. Take it easy, everyone. Like, do all of this good stuff. Five-star reviews. All of that. And we will see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.